Hey friends, welcome to the Church Tips Podcast. I am so excited to be with you. My name is Dick Hardy and I'm with my good friend Jeff Deal from the great state of Minnesota. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going, Dick? <laughs> there. Hey, you know, either you're wearing the stocking cap because worship pastors are cool that way, or it's chilly in Minneapolis, something like that. It could be a little of both, maybe. Yeah, a little bolt, a little bolt. So anyway, Jeff serves as the um uh a on the worship uh faculty at North Central University in Minneapolis. And uh his also has this claim to fame of being a lead singer with Sonic Flood. Uh, the great uh, worship band uh, back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And it really is a privilege of us, uh, ours at Leaders at Church and Church University, to be able to hang out uh, with Jeff. So thanks for, for doing the drill with us, man. Thanks. I love the partnership. Appreciate you guys. Good. Over the last number of months, we've uh, created uh, with Jeff's uh, help and kindness and generosity, the uh, worship leadership course in Church University. You're going to hear more and more about that in the next number of days. Uh, along the way, we created two uh, PDFs that are designed to be helpful to lead pastors and to worship leaders. Uh, the first is the Worship Pastors uh, Guide to um, Navigating Generational and Cultural Gaps. High value PDF. You'll want to grab that. We've got the we've got uh, notes on that, or they're in the show notes. Uh, the link to where to get that PDF. And the second one is uh, the Worship Pastors Guide to uh, honoring the lead pastor. Again, uh, both of those will be in the show notes uh, for you as we're moving along. So, but let's jump in right now to uh, the topic of making the most of your worship transitions. So um, uh, worship pastors and worship leaders for sure uh, know that feeling of, oh man, I'm finishing this song and I got to get to the next one. I had all these kind of things. And Lead pastors have been out there watching that thing go upside down way too often. So, uh, Jeff, I know that's never happened to you, but maybe you could give us a little jump start into the conversation on uh, on how you navigate this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, most guys out there know that they've been cruising along in their favorite song, their worship song, and everything's going great. And then you get like three bars from the end. You go, <gasps> I forgot to talk about the transition, you know, and how are we going to get from this song to the next song? It's like leaping across the Grand Canyon sometimes, you know? So it, we just, I, I have a few ideas that I think are going to help you. You might think, oh, I know how to do transitions. I just have a few ideas that might be outside of the box that yeah. I really want to share with you. Yeah. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about that here a little bit. You know, where do you begin in figuring out transitions? Where does it all start? Yeah, well, it starts honestly with what keys the songs are in, because that's a big part of our transitions. If all the key, you know, songs, song keys are the same, that's going to help your transitions. Now, you're still not all the way there yet, but many times we have different keys that we're singing these songs in, which is going to make the transitions a little bit more challenging. So there's a few things that we want to do to encourage people to help you know how to make the most of these transitions, right? So, I mean, even though, even if you have all, let's just pretend that you had all your songs in the key of G, you know, they're all the same. You might think, ah, I don't need to worry about transitions. The keys are all the same. Well, that's not true. I don't want you to underestimate transitions, even if they're in the same key, because yep. there's different tempos, they're different moods. Are you listening to the Holy Spirit? What's going on here? You know, is someone going to say something? There's so many different aspects of a transition, and it's important to not underestimate those. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, who should be involved in the uh, transition discussion? Is that just a, a one man, one woman uh, decision or are there others involved? How, how does that come together? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say that the worship leader needs to have a plan beforehand about how the transition should go. I okay. would say that the, as part of the worship leader's job is to, you know, you've chosen the songs, you're working them together, you're kind of fitting them together at times. You might even switch the order of a song because these two songs are in the same key and it works a little bit better for the flow. So you're involved in that, I, that process, even from the choosing of the songs. So then when you get into it, you have a plan about how you think things are going to go, and then you can present that to your team. Now, some guys are so on top of it that they'll actually put some of those ideas in the planning center online documents, right? Okay. So they'll actually put some of those notes in there. Hey, we're going to 
end this song and we're going to do this swell and then we're going to count off and then we're going to move, you know, they're going to give some of those directions. And I would encourage you, if you can do that, do it. Now, one of the things I would like to encourage you, this is a big, big point right here, right? So many times what I've seen people struggle with, they have this big opener song, right? And it's a big song, it's a fun song, and it ends with this big crash out, as we would call it, where everybody's like, da-da, you know, and the drummer's hitting, and the keyboard's playing, the guitar player's doing their thing, and then we kind of end with a ba ba you know, and it's over. Well, then the second song is this song off of maybe the latest Hillsong thing or latest Mad City project, and it starts very soft, and maybe with what we would call a pad sound or a, or a keyboard type of sound. And so people think, oh, well, we have to do this song exactly like it is on the album. Well, you're kind of knee-jerking people. Like You go from this moment of celebration to this quiet as a church mouse type moment. You know. Well, there's different ways to fix that. I want to give you two real quick. One is to, if you can, when you finish that fast song, maybe go back to the chorus of that song and if it's possible, sing that chorus again, but slightly down in intensity and maybe not with the same tempo. There's a lot of fast songs that are really, uh, that, that work that well this way, where you can sing out the chorus, but slower, more elongated. And I'm telling you, this does a lot of things. It, it helps the transition, but it also helps people sing that song with new ears and new eyes because suddenly they're singing something different and they have new perspective on the lyrics they're singing. So you bring that the intensity of the first song down by singing that, that chorus down and then it eases you into the transition for a slower song. Now, the other way you can do that is the flip. You can always take that second song and beef up the introduction Take a section from the end of the second song that usually is bigger and louder and bring that up to the front and make your introduction uh, louder and more intense. So you can crash out on song one, count off on the next song and kind of go big full band into the intro of your second song and then drop into the verse yeah. where so that smooths all that out. Yeah, no, that's good. So how do you... Uh, when you're doing transitions, of course, we've got, um, as we've talked about in um, a few of these podcasts, you've got varieties of players here. Of course, you have the singers, you got the band, you got the worship people. How do you, how do you, or the, the production people, how do you talk, communicate to the production people about transitions? Yeah, I mean, what, what's going to happen is, especially if they are at the rehearsal, then they're going to kind of see what's happening and they're going to experience the spaces that are going to happen between songs. But some of that does need to be discussed. I know that some are, uh, there'd be an issue of whether or not a person is going to be talking, you know, like lighting. Is lighting going to come down and it's just going to be silhouettes? Is it just going to be backlit? Or are we going to need to keep a light? Are we going to need to move a light from this person who's singing to the next person? Is someone praying on those transitions? So you have to kind of talk through some of those elements so that the production people know, is this mic going to be up, you know, uh, if I'm leading the first song and someone else is leading the second song, there's always a question as to whether am I going to exhort at the end of the first song and maybe pray as part of the transition, or is the other singer going to do that as part of the next song? So the the engineer needs to know what's happening there too, so they can make sure they have the mic levels at the right level. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, you referenced uh, creativity along the way. Um, uh, just talk a little more about creativity and transitions. Yeah, there's so many great things that you can do. Uh, you know, being able to bring different ideas, different ways of doing the transitions. Um, you know, like for example, sometimes you might think this is a difficult transition. If you're if you're doing a song in C and you want to drop down a half step for the next song in B, now that's probably one of your most difficult transition moments. But I want to give you two really awesome ideas on how to make that without it feeling like a weird half step, you know, drop. Now, number one would be at the end of song one that's in C, you are going to go a cappella singing without the band and you're going to sing the chorus again of that song. It could be that you start singing it with the band 
uh, sticking on that, that root chord, the one chord, and then they begin to fade out as you begin to sing. Now, this creates a moment where the congregation can hear their voices so much better, and there's this beautiful moment of everyone singing. But you've taken the music away, and the voices are just singing, and now when we're done with that chorus, now you can fade in a new pad in the new key, and it's not so jarring. Right. Yeah. Another quick way that you could do that is if you're not wanting to go to acapella, you could try a drums only intro to song number two. So you finish song number one in C and you kind of you know swell at the end of that, and then you count off the next song. And the drummer, we create this four-bar drum loop. It could be with a medium tempo song or an up-tempo song or even a slower song. You could kind of keep this little drum thing going with toms or whatever. But just something that kind of keeps going. So as you finish song one, you count off song two. The drums start the next song in the right tempo, but we haven't got to the key yet. Right, So we're fading out while the drums are going for those four bars. We're fading out the key of C. And then when we come in with the key of B, there's been no, there's been no key at, for at least a bar or so, a measure of the, that drum fill. And then when we come in, it's something new. So there's been some space between those two different keys. And that helps the ear uh, navigate that better. You know, you, you referenced uh, you know, the, the, the congregation uh, singing hearing themselves sing, you know, they really play an important role, even in things like transitions. They do. Uh, and so um, you've referenced to, to me uh, about the, the, the role of the leader teaching the congregation to stay engaged during yeah. transition. Talk a little bit about that. Oh, man, that's a huge one, Dick. I mean, this is part of our culture that we've got to shift, worship leader, right? If the, if the, congregation has this mentality that the only time they're worshiping God is when the lyrics are on the screen, then we don't have the correct culture. So what we right. want to do, because there are musical moments, there are transitions at the end of the song, the, the introductions at the beginning of the song. If people like disengage and then re-engage, what you can do, as Dick mentioned, is you can teach the congregation to worship through the transitions. Yeah. And sometimes it's just a matter of saying it, calling it out, saying this is the elephant in the room. One Sunday morning, you're just saying, hey, you know what? There's something I want to encourage you guys. You know, you might notice us as a band navigating between different keys and different songs, starting, stopping, all that stuff. But we want to encourage you to stay engaged with God. Like, don't feel like you have to start and stop your worship when we're starting and stopping songs. Well, you know, Jeff, we've had great conversation on this whole subject of transitions. Give us a wrap up. Uh, what do you want the viewer and listener to really take away from this conversation? Well, I think the biggest thing is just making sure that we're prepared, right? I think we've got to make sure that we don't forget about the transitions and that we don't wait till the rehearsal to start thinking about the transitions. You right. really need to make a plan, be creative, don't under underestimate your transitions, and then come together with your worship team and work it all out. Now, yeah. what it does remind me of is a little thing that we do here in Minnesota called portaging. Now, I've never actually done this myself, but I've heard it's a lot of fun. You go up to the northern part of Minnesota. See, we're the, the state that has 10,000 lakes, right? So we have a lot of lakes that are really close together. People will go up there. They'll take their canoes and their camping gear, and they will load it all up, and they'll start paddling across a, a lake. And they get to the other side of that lake. They'll pick all their stuff up in their canoe and walk it across da, 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 over to the next lake, put it in there and keep going. And then you camp along the way, you have you know cookouts and all that stuff, but you go from lake to lake to lake. Well, that's wonderful in Minnesota, but it's not wonderful for worship <laughs> because what that does is it breaks up the flow. Right, yeah. we don't want to get to the end. The, the lakes are the songs, right? And and we want we don't want to get to the end of the song and then get up and go, okay, over to the next song. Here we go, right? We want to keep the flow. So yeah. that's our goal with transitions is to keep that flow. That is going to help people stay engaged with God, which is our greatest desire. Wow, that's so good, Jeff. This has been so helpful, so good. It's just right where pastors live, right where worship leaders live. Uh, can't thank you enough for the great content you've given us on this podcast. Uh, and to the viewer and listener, thanks for hanging out with us on this. I, again, want to remind you the uh, two PDFs that are in the show notes, uh, the Worship Pastor's Guide to um, Navigating Generational and Cultural Gaps 
and the other is the Worship Pastor's Guide to Honoring the Lead Pastor. And uh, we we've got a very simple uh, uh, link, leaders.church slash gaps and leaders.church slash honor. Uh, feel free to download one or both of those, and I think you'll find them to be a real blessing to you as you lead your church and the congregation to the greater levels of worship. Again, Jeff, thank you very much for hanging out with us, and uh, thank the viewers uh, very much for, for doing the same. Make it a great one today, and be blessed. All right, take care. Hey, Jonathan here, real quick before you go. Everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.